This past fall, I did a special sale with So Avant Garde. I'm a partner with them and I want to tell you a little bit about that in just a second. But the sale in the fall did really, really well. It was a site wide 30% off sale using the code Veronica30. And a number of viewers really enjoyed that and asked, when are we doing this sale again? So here we are. Yay. <laughs> the sale runs from today, which is Friday at noon, and it goes all the way through Monday at midnight, right before it turns Tuesday. So be sure to go to So Avant Garde though today if there are fragrances that we talk about in this video or that you already know have the tendency to sell out during these sales and add to cart and check out using the code Veronica30 as soon as you can. Some of these fragrances are going to sell out this weekend for sure, especially ones that are low in stock. I don't know if So Avant Garde will have different or new inventory as of the weekend that I post this. I'm filming this on Super Bowl Sunday, and so I'm looking at the website to see what is in stock that I really like that I would recommend to you to go look at. And so I can't promise you that these aren't already sold out by the time this sale begins and that there aren't others that I would recommend that are going to be back in inventory. I'll do my best just to talk about the ones that I know are in stock with an exception or two that I really think are worth you having on your radar, regardless of whether you get the sale on them or not. So with that, let me say first that I really enjoy being a partner with So Avant Garde. I have had the opportunity to do a lot of partnerships, a lot of collaborations, a lot of sponsorships. I get very many emails every day asking if I'm interested in this or that. And I will tell you, I turn down the vast majority of them because I only wanna bring to you, my audience, the highest quality experiences with either on-site retailers or discounts that I think are worth your time because they sell great fragrances or they sell fragrances at really fantastic prices, either or, but I've been very picky about who I have partnered with. I have enjoyed my partnership with So Avant Garde. They have been really fantastic to me, both as a partner and as a consumer because I purchase a lot off of their website as well. So I can't speak highly enough about the team over at So Avant Garde. They've been really fantastic to me. And I just wanted to share that because it's important that you know that, that I enjoy my experience with them and therefore I hope that you enjoy yours as well as a consumer. Let's go. We're gonna go brand by brand and I'm gonna go in alpha order and I'll share with you my very top recommendations. So we're going to start with the house of Andrea Mack. I had the opportunity to sample very many from this house. I think I might have sampled all of the offerings, if I'm not mistaken. And I really enjoyed the wide gamut of fragrances. Maybe some were not for me, but there were a few that really were for me. So this is one where I have an exception. I'm going to talk about one that isn't in stock when I'm filming, but I think is worth your time. However, this one is in stock and it is called Supernova. This is one that really impressed me when I sampled the entire house. And I'm going to make sure I get you some of the right notes and not just do off of memory here. Spicy with cardamom, cinnamon, and saffron. And then in the heart, there's lavender and then cedarwood and olibanum in the base. So for me, this is a heavily woody fragrance, but in a very soft and silky smooth way. I really enjoy the lightness of being that this fragrance has for it to be a woody fragrance that also has just some nice hints of spice. I wouldn't say it's heavily spicy. I would say that it has just the right amount of spice to add intrigue. And there's a lot of warmth in the fragrance to accompany the woodiness. I find this to be unisex leaning slightly masculine. So for those of you that are into those kinds of scents, or you're a little bit more daring and you want something a little more mysterious, a little darker, without going too much into like vampy gothic territory or anything like that. This is a really good one. All of the bottles from Andrea Mack have this same kind of shape. Some of them have a little bit of design. Otherwise, they are just really black with the, the name on them. I have others from Andrea Mack that I plan to purchase and that I would advise. There really aren't any I would say don't bother with because they're all unique and interesting in their own ways. This one is out of stock, but it is worth keeping on your radar in case it comes back in stock, especially during this weekend, and it is Pavilion. I am head over heels about this fragrance. I've talked about it in several other videos now at this point, mostly rose, a nice, soft, sort of supple, sexy oud. Again, you know, people are funny about oud. They tend to think it's not going to be for them. In here, the way that it coexists alongside these other notes is just pure divinity. A heaping dose of vanilla, especially in the base little touch of honey, a little touch of uh, almost like a gourmand sweetness, and a very soft hint of patchouli and powder. When I tell you that this is one of the most complex, intoxicating, alluring, rose, vanilla, oud combinations, it kind of gives me hints of oud satin mood. It's in that sort of same vein. 
However, I find this to be more complex and interesting, and that is a beautiful fragrance too, but this is, this is special is what I will say. So keep this on the radar in case it comes back in stock. So Avant Garde is one of the only retailers that I know carries this next line. And the one that I have tried just really, really captured my attention. I fell in love with it at first sniff. It's the house of Antonio Croce. And all of the bottles look like this with different colors. These beautiful, multifaceted, jewel looking type of bottles. This one is called Unica. Here's another floral oody fragrance with a little bit of spiciness. There's some beautiful berries at the top an oud note here. When I, I mean, I don't even sense the oud in the fragrance. For me, this gives me a very heavy, almost like a black currant sweetness. If you think about C Intense from Armani, the newer version of that, the sweetness that's in there is similar to this, or this is similar to that, with even more of like a berry nuance at the top. Beautiful peony note in the fragrance. I love the note of peony in perfumery. Coupled with rose, fantastic on its own, amazing, very sort of fresh, clean smelling floral note. This is also woody and has a little hint of spiciness in it. I think this is one of the most glorious fragrances that I have ever tried. Really, really enjoy this. So I would highly recommend this if you are into floral, fruity, oody fragrances. From this same line, I would be interested in trying out Sophisticata, which comes in like an off-wide, almost ecru colored bottle. That's supposed to be this sweet, vanillic, aquatic, maybe slightly powdery fragrance. Sounds interesting. That has caught my attention, as well as Meraviglia, which is a floral green fruity fragrance. So I may pick up one of those. I wanted to put those on your radar. I can vouch for this one. Beautiful, moderately long lasting, decently projecting and absolutely divine. Let's go next to Atelier Desor. I'm gonna start off with Lune Feline, which is newer to my collection. I've shared with you, I'm not so crazy about these gold flecks because they get on your skin and clothing. They don't seem to bother other people, so just keep that in mind. But this is close to Baby Cat and those types of fragrances that are heavily vanilla and spicy and sort of those sexy fall fragrances. This has some woody notes as well. It's dark, it's intriguing. It's like a nighttime sexy vanilla. It's hard to go wrong with this one if you like that kind of sort of spicy, sultry vanilla sort of fragrance. So this is highly recommended. They do carry the extrait of Lune Feline as well if you like that one or would like to try that one. For me, that was more heavy on the vanilla. I appreciated that the spices of this OG one come through a little bit more. So this would be my suggestion between the two, but it depends on what you want. And then similar to this, but slightly different in its own flair, I would recommend Rouge Sarai or Sarai. Primary difference being that this has a prominent plum note and some patchouli and some dates. The dates in here, if you know what dates smell like, it has this sort of sticky, sweet, almost syrupy resinous type of scent to it. Think about like how syrup smells, dates smell like that with maybe a little bit more sugar. And that's what you get in this fragrance. I will say this also has a more pronounced woodiness, the Rouge Sarai than Lune Feline, which uh, is more heavy on the vanilla. So that's a primary difference. This one is a little bit darker, the Rouge Sarai, whereas Lune Feline, I think, has a little bit more versatility, despite the fact that people think that this is a super strong, spicy fragrance. I think this one is a little bit darker and sultrier even than the Lune Feline, but also really fantastic. Of course, So Avant Garde sells Pink Me Up. I don't own that, but a lot of the ladies here on YouTube really love that fragrance. They call it sort of like an ultimate Barbie pretty girl fragrance. So if you're into that, check that out too. I used to own Nuda Veritas from this line. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty scent. It was a little too light for me and I had other fragrances that smelled like it. So I sold that one. I am interested in the Nuda Veritas Extra de Parfum. So let me know, have you tried the extra version? And if so, would you advise me to get it? What do you think? I love that this has the note of cologne in it, which gives you that sort of watermelon combined with like seaside air type of smell. This has the beautiful florals in the middle, jasmine sambac, Chinese jasmine, osmanthus, fruity type of apricot scent, tiara flower. I mean, maybe I don't even need to hear from y'all. Maybe I need to just go ahead and ask. Add this one to cart and bring this baby home. That one is $345, so that 30% off is going to go a long way with Nuda Veritas X today. So that is what's sitting in my cart, and perhaps I have purchased it by the time this video posts. So 
let me know what you think anyway. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I'm refilming the segment for the next two brands only. I realized upon editing that I did not have my microphone on. Forgive me. And then we'll go back to your regularly scheduled program. <laughs> the next brand I'd like to feature is BDK. Wildly popular on Instagram and on YouTube. I've heard rave reviews about just about everything in the brand. I own five fragrances and I'm looking at a sixth. My primary love from the brand is Passessoir. So So Avant Garde also carries the extra version of this. I found that one a tad masculine leaning for myself, but I really, really do like this one, which for me, the primary players here are a gorgeous, really fruity, juicy, juicy, vibrant quince note. <laughs> And then a woody base. And I think that this is great for spring. I believe there are some florals in here also. However, it's mostly a fruity, woody fragrance that I think is great really all year round, but fantastic as we go here into early spring, definitely summer and fall. Of course, you can wear this in the winter as well. I think the fruits are in here that are in here are deep enough and strong enough to make it through the winter months as well. Highly recommend this one. For me, one of the underrated gems from the BDK line is the absolutely gorgeous Tabac Rose. Listen, friends, well, first of all, look at the cute label with the relief on it. That's not a reason to buy a bottle, but it sure does help. It's so pretty to look at. This here is for the grown and sexy friends. You've got tobacco and rose and a cacao note that I think are the primary players here. To me, this is pretty reminiscent of Oud Bouquet in some ways. I wouldn't call them twins, but they are they sort of vibe the same as people like to say. This doesn't have Oud in it that I, that I know of, but it has that same sort of deep kind of sweetness and edgy the rose I think adds a little bit of sharpness and edginess to this the tobacco adds depth the chocolate slash cacao type of vibe that's here is nice and soft but what an, a great accompanying player for the tobacco and the rose this is a very mature fragrance and really long lasting a powerhouse of a fragrance that I think deserves more attention another unsung hero from the BDK line is creme de queer here Listen, for those of you that like a very buttery, suede type of fragrance and you want something that has a little bit of edge to it, I would highly recommend this one. It's got some citrus at the top, mostly a pineapple note, but for me, it just comes across as this soft, almost like buttery citrus accord. And it calms down into a very soft, very sort of luxe, suede feeling. If you imagine like a cool suede that has a, almost like an oily slash buttery texture to it when you touch it, Hard to describe, but that's what I get from, from here. I believe there's vanilla in the fragrance as well, if I remember correctly, that gives this a nice femininity so that it doesn't feel masculine because of the suediness to it. This is a fragrance that I think would play really, really well in corporate settings for those of you that want a bit of a power fragrance without screaming, hey, I have perfume on. <laughs> this is one that for me smells subtly commanding when you wear it. It says, I'm in charge without having to scream about it. Really, really great fragrance. And then everyone's heard about the next one and it's controversial. People either love it or they just don't like it. <laughs> this is Gris Charnel. I was on the didn't like very much side when I first tried it. It was a little bizarre for me. As I let it sit on skin and got more acquainted with it and tried it again, I actually fell in love. A lot of people pick up a strong fig in the fragrance. I would say for me, that is maybe an accompanying player or background note. For me, I get mostly this beautiful, creamy sandalwood along with a nice, bright cardamom, spicy aspect and it also has a tea note which makes it kind of like a comforting fragrance and it has a little bit of edge to it and some people think about this as I do as a rainy day fragrance maybe because of the gray color of the juice but this is a beautiful one if you like you have to like sandalwood you do it's a nice creamy sandalwood here for me that is the the star player in the fragrance and the cardamom and like I said a tiny bit of fig and the tea are like the jewels in the sandalwood crown for this fragrance. So Avant Garde also carries the x -ray version of this. I tried that. It's a little masculine leaning for my taste, but if that is your jam and zhuzh, it's out there on that website. And then maybe one of the most popular ones from the house and one that got the original hype and really put BDK on the map is Rouge Smoking. A lot of people talk about this smelling a little bit cola-ish, maybe like root beer. It does have a bit of a cherry nuance. The cherry nuance is very light for me. This is mostly like a tonka bean, vanilla, almost like fuzzy, cozy fragrance that, um, you know, people accuse of not lasting long. And that's been, you know, my experience with it, that it sits a little bit closer to the skin. This is the type of fragrance I would certainly wear on a day that I'm hanging around the house in my robe or pajamas. Go take a shower and spray yourself down with this and sit around and drink tea or 
coffee you know, most of the morning, this might be it. Or I could equally see this being great for like a very intimate date night where you're going to be sitting close to each other and you want to douse your sweater in this nice comforting scent. This is an intriguing one in that way. I don't own, but I am still interested in Velvet Tonka, so that one might make it into my cart. This is an almond fragrance with a heavy dose of a nice vanillic tonka bean. There's actually vanilla in it, bourbon vanilla, and a little bit of woodiness in the base. I tried it before and enjoyed it, and I don't think I was ready for almond fragrances at that time. That was a number of years ago, and I've since gotten into almond a whole lot more. So that one may be joining the collection. I wanted to highlight a house that we don't hear a lot about in Fragcom. The icon behind the fragrance is featured in lots and lots of videos on YouTube. You can check out her background, former editor-in-chief of Vogue Paris, Karine Rodfeld, and I had the opportunity to try out a small sample set. These are really old school, beautiful fragrances. A little bit much for me for the most part. There were a couple that caught my attention. For those of you that miss old school perfumery, with the mix of notes that really come into the room and make their presence known, that just scream sophistication and class. Check out this house. There are some great perfumers that have collaborated with this house, Dominique Ropignon, Aurelien Guichard, and others. My top recommendation from the line is Karine, after the, the owner, named after the owner. This is a floral patchouli fragrance. It has some earthy aspects to it. It reminds me a lot of the big perfumes of the 80s that perhaps our, our moms or our aunts wore, and that sort of suffocated you with a big hug. This is a really big fragrance with a lot of presents. Pink pepper, some spices, gardenia, and jasmine. Really neat fragrance. This, if I picked up one, this might be the one that I looked at first. For those of you that like leather, I would point out Car Wai or Car Wei. Real aromatic leather fragrance with some spices. It has some animalic touches. This also reminds me of fragrances like Cabo Chard and those big leathery powerful fragrances of the past that we don't really see in modern perfumery except here and there. This was a neat one. And for those of you that like like resinous amber fragrances with florals, I would suggest looking at Aurelian, named after the perfumer, Aurelian Guichard. He created this one. This one has a really strong, sticky, yummy amber accord with some beautiful florals in it, orange blossom, jasmine. It has myrrh and patchouli. Look, this is a fragrance with a lot of personality. These bottles are gorgeous. And again, a house that we don't hear talked about. So for those of you that are always wondering, when are we going to stop talking about the same five or six houses over and over again? <laughs> Look at Kareen Rothfeld and maybe check out the sample pack. And or if you're bold, go ahead and order one of these and have a blast trying it out. Let us know what you think. So the next house that I'm going to talk about is here. And I have Hydra which when I hauled it, I talked about it may be coming across a little bit like air freshener for some of you. And I was concerned that some people may not like this. But for those of you that want a very fresh, very fresh spring smell, you may be interested in this. Some of the key notes that stand out to me are mint and watermelon. And I love that it has a little bit of soft musk and sea notes. So if you know what sea air smells like in fragrance, it has that type of vibe to it. And if you've tried Arethusa from Tiziana Terenzi, it gives me a little bit of that as well. Almost like it has a hidden strawberry note, very so soft and subtle. The watermelon that's here is not the sweetest watermelon note. It's almost like an under-ripened, almost green watermelon, which I think is kind of cool alongside the mint. So for me, this is a refreshing fragrance, great for hottest days of spring and summer. So check this out if you're interested in that. I'm also wanting to try Shanghai from the line. It has lemon and tea and some kind of fruit at the top, peony, coconut water, and jasmine in the middle, and some other, some other things happening in the base. But the bottle is gorgeous, and the notes sound good so far. And then forgive me because I don't know how to pronounce this, Salela. And this one has plum and rose, two different types of rose. It has patchouli and oud and some resins and balsams in it. And it sounds exciting. So this com this one comes highly recommended. And I have fragrances that smell like this, so I'm not entirely sure if I want to rush out to get this one, but it sounds like a good one if you're in the market for that type. For my Clive Christian fans, now's the time to get these on sale. I have, and I really do like this, this is Jump Up and Kiss Me Ecstatic. This is a really, really nicely done, clean tuberose fragrance. So the notes listed on the website, it's citrus and it's tuberose and it's sandalwood. But for me, this is primarily a tuberose fragrance, and I think it is really, really good. It reminds me quite a bit of Atlantide from Tiziana Terenzi. It reminds me of Carnal Flower from Frederick Mall. It reminds me of Truth or Dare from Madonna. It's in that range of beautiful tuberose fragrances 
really, really nicely done. Very, very lovely fragrance. And remember, if you're looking for this, you're looking for the ecstatic version, not the hedonistic one, which I think is the male leaning version of this fragrance. You want to get the ecstatic one. Gorgeous. I have got my eye on blonde amber, which is sitting out there as well. These are pricey friends. These are 580 retail. Whew. So that 30% off really doesn't make a difference. It's got rum and tobacco and tuberose and dried fruits and tonka. Whew vetiver and mir myrrh not mir <laughs> i'm thinking of vetiver because i always say vetiver but it's i guess vetiver not that it matters we all know what we're talking about right and myrrh anyway that fragrance blonde amber i'm blaming evelyn at the ev effect for putting me onto this fragrance so it's been on my radar ever since she talked about loving it so i'm not sure i'm not sure about that one but uh that's that's one that's on my mind so avant-garde also carries fragrance Dubois. We've talked about a lot of those fragrances and a lot of channels do. So my, my top recommendations quickly are New York Fifth Avenue, which I've talked about ad nauseum here lately because I really love the rosy woodiness of this fragrance and think it is just absolutely sophisticated, divine. In fact, in the same family as like Tobacco Rose without the chocolate and the, the tobacco, but still has that like beautiful, intense rose note with the woodiness really, really good. We've talked about Santal Complet, which is the most gorgeous coconut sandalwood fragrance with a little bit of citrus in the very opening, but settles down into that creamy coconut sandalwood that is really, really good. And then the super uber sexy Cavort. Cavort. You've heard a lot about this. Saffron, cinnamon, rose, alang alang, a little bit of citrus, patchouli, sandalwood, just sexy, intriguing, long lasting, great date night fragrance. And then friends, don't ever say I didn't do anything for you. <laughs> this next fragrance stays sold out. So if you're interested in it, now is the time to get Mise en Cire Ambre Magique. Really one of the very best vanilla amber types of fragrances that's out on the market right now. I love the smoothness of this fragrance. I love that it has some citrus to sort of calm down the, the amber like, aspects of it that can really take over the fragrance. I love that it has a little bit of spiciness to it. This is really, really good. And if you like these types of fragrances and are looking for something like this that can go into the summer months, this would be the one. It has a lot of presence and oomph and is long lasting. I have put a dent in this one. <laughs> looking at it, the light from back here. I would say that this one has enough, it has enough presence, but it is also thin enough, if you will, to take you into the summertime. So this is one I would not hesitate to wear in warmer weather if I wanted that kind of warm, enveloping, very comforting fragrance that an amber vanilla fragrance can be. And I think that the citruses in here and the florals lend some lightness to this. This is one of the best on the market. Very, very smooth fragrance, easy going, easy to wear. So Avant-Garde also carries a lot of fragrances that I'm not going to talk about because I don't have time, but Juliet has a gun, Juice Box, Lalique, Mancera, Mask Milano, Memo Paris, M. Mikalef, Montal, Nasomato, and others. But let me go through the rest that I wanted to share with you the most. And I did a video dedicated to the New Notes fragrance line. There are a lot of gems in the line, some that maybe didn't work out for me so much. And I just wanted to share my top three recommendations from my experience, both for that video and since then, and me continuing to test these fragrances even more than I did for that video. I've already told y'all about Erotica Minimale. The bottles all look the same, so I don't know <laughs> why I'm showing them to y'all. They're different, some are different colors, but we talked about this one and this one being like the carnal one, if you will, powdery patchouli smells like bodies after getting intimate erotica minimale, but my top three recommendations. One is queen of the sea. And this has lemon and grapefruit and a marine accord. People talked about this smelling like a sexy siren <laughs> fresh out of the ocean. There's magnolia and geranium in the middle and rose and in the base, a little patchouli, some wood, some musk. This is a really interesting fragrance that smells like the sea with some citruses, with some deeper notes. Uh, and I just love the name. This one's intriguing. I'm also enjoying Osmanto Shock. If you look on So Avant-Garde, the notes that are listed for this, it looks like an error. I think they have the same notes listed for Queen of the Sea as Osmanto Shock. Shock. But this one is like a peachy osmanthus sort of apricot type of smell at the top with a lot of vanilla. It's sweet. It's a little bit intriguing. It's got tonka bean and some woodiness and some spices in it and a little bit of white floral. And I think will be fun to wear here in the spring. And then I talked about musk complexity in that video that I did as being one of my top faves. 
This is an intriguing, soft, subtle, musky fragrance with a little bit of floral and sweetness on it. And so I'll just leave it at that. Go check out the video if you want to know more about these fragrances. But those are my top three recommendations with Erotica Minimale being only for the most bold among you. <laughs> From Nishane, you know I love 100 Silent Ways. This gorgeousness. Good. Tuberose, peach, gardenia, vanilla, sandalwood, vetiver. Soft tuberose and vanilla with a little bit of fruitiness to it is what I get. Absolutely gorgeous fragrance. Can't go wrong with this. Crowd pleasing, a nice level of sweetness. Highly recommend this fragrance. There are others from Nishane that I would like to highlight, but in the interest of time, I really want to talk about the X line that came out more recently. And so I mentioned that I much prefer Ani X to the original Ani, and I have since sold the original Ani, or maybe it's still sitting out on my Mercari. I don't quite remember. But this, you know, Ani is that very, very spicy spicy i think it's ginger and cardamom and a bunch of other spices and a deep vanilla this is still a nice vanilla fragrance but it has this really soft opening of bright bright citrusy fragrances a little bit more on like a softer ginger i think there's a lemon and some other citrusy types of notes which i think help make this a little bit more wearable of a fragrance for me the original ani opened pretty rough for me it was in the deep dry down that i enjoyed it most this one i enjoyed the wear all throughout i find this to be a smoother easier wearing fragrance and nicely lasting i also love 100 silent ways x which has a little bit of leather in it a very very tolerable leather for oh so nice it's almost suede like a buttery suede leather a cord that is accompanying what you get in your regular 100 silent ways and makes this almost like the nighttime version or sultrier version of the more innocent 100 silent ways this is really really good and very intoxicating to wear and then <laughs> i resisted purchasing this myself because my husband didn't like the original although i liked it i liked the x version and then So Avant Garde sent this to me for review. And I'm really glad because I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I loved it when I sampled the X line. And I have convinced my husband to love it also. And it smells absolutely sexy, intoxicating on him. So if you're a gentleman watching, you need in your life. And I'll say that about a lot of fragrances. I don't tell anybody they need anything. Sometimes I do. <laughs> this is Fan Your Flames X. This is divine sexiness on my husband. I plan to wear this too, but it's sitting on his shelf and he has worn this three times since we've gotten it. And every time he wears it, I run, I run over to him and bury my face in his chest, mostly because I'm 5'3 and he's over six feet tall. <laughs> so that's about where my face hits, but that's where he sprays. And y'all, oh, this is so, so stinking good. This is, I mean, stinking and smelling good. Don't go in the same sentence, but you get what I'm saying. This has the creamiest, deepest, darkest, sultriest coconut accord, some woodiness. It doesn't have for me the smokiness that the original had that I think was off-putting for my husband. He said it smelled like a barbecue, <laughs> like the air in a barbecue setting. I don't get barbecue out of this. I get almost like the Jean-Paul Gaultier. Oh my God, I'm forgetting the name of it. That's in the blue bottle with the fig over the man parts. Le Beau, that's what it's called, Le Beau. <laughs> that one, it's like that, even deeper and sultrier. And this has a creaminess to it that I just think is like everything. I really, really love this on my husband and I will be wearing this too, especially as we get into later spring and summer and I want something a little bit thicker, a little bit sexier and sultrier for the evening time. I can't recommend this enough. So Avant Garde also carries Parfums de Marly. They got all the Delinas, all of the popular men's fragrances, Herod and all of that sitting out there. This, I believe they had in stock. And then of course it sold out immediately, if I remember correctly. So if it comes back in stock, grab it. And that is Vallea, if you're interested in it. Some of you have tried this and don't like it. I didn't like it when I first tried it and then fell in love with it at the mall as I spritzed it some more, walked around. Mm super duper clean very clean almost laundry-esque fragrance with some musk and citrus and some nice floral hints i feel like this is heavier on the citrus than the floral but it's all so so like nicely woven together here in the fragrance that it's been a nice sleeper surprise for me then let's go to a house that i am mega interested in because i had the opportunity to try some and thought where has this house been 
and its plume impression. So we talked about Royal Bourbon in the beginning of that New Notes video. This is so, so good. Sitting on my husband's shelf, one that I'm planning to reach for as well. What stands out to me from the notes is the cinnamon and a little bit of bright ginger. In the middle, you have that rum, tobacco, and leather. There's caramel in the middle too, and I do get some kind of sweetness. I don't really pick that up as being caramel, but you have that and then a beautiful vanilla, amber, woody base. This smells so, so good on oh, my husband. Really, really nice, deep, beautiful, like fall, winter fragrance. One that I probably wouldn't reach for deep into the spring and summer, but smells fantastic. It's in the neighborhood of like, imagine like the Angel Share and the Caltech Nights and the you know, like our Ojans out there, like that with a little bit more amber and vanilla and woodiness to it that makes this even deeper and really, really good. Nice, boozy, spicy fragrance. Spicy as in like cinnamon spicy, okay? Oh, so, so good. And if it's back in stock, because y'all done bought this up, I see you, I'm watching y'all. <laughs> Pop heart, I want so badly. Top is apple, pineapple, and strawberry. Wow. Middle, raspberry, rose, magnolia, and then caramel, vanilla, and musk in the base. Rave reviews on this. People really love this. The samples and the full-size bottle is sold out when I'm filming this, but I got my aunt on the website <laughs> hoping that it comes and back then, in stock. a fragrance that was sent to me for review that I am really, really enjoying. My husband said it, it has good throw, like a candle has good throw. <laughs> this is Rivalite Imperial. I'm going with that pronunciation. Work with me here. <laughs> This is this nice, spicy, dried fruit at the top. It's got just the right touch of patchouli in the middle, a nice, sweet vanilla and tonka bean here, and amber, and a little sandalwood. Oh, this is deep. I like that this could be like a cousin, or probably if these were male and female twins, Royal Bourbon would be maybe the male-leaning twin, and this one would be the female-leaning version of a duo. This one has the dried fruits in it, and it has more sweetness to it, which I think makes it a little bit more feminine and a beautiful wear, deep wearing, sultry, really delicious. This one I would probably wear year round, but maybe more heavily in the fall, particularly, and in, through the winter and spring. Summer, less so, but really gorgeous fragrance. I'd like to try more from this house so I may sample others. If you have recommendations from Plume Impressions, drop it down in the comments while we have this beautiful sale going on so our friends can go explore this house that I think is underrated for sure. So Avant-Garde sells Thamine. I don't have any fragrances from that house, but if you're interested in Peregrina, Patalia, Blue Heart, anything from that house, Bravi, go check it out while it's on sale here. I may be checking out one of those myself. It has the House of Oud. And so I have What About Pop, which is sitting right up here, this egg. I'm not gonna, yes, I am. I'm gonna try to lift it like this. May the odds be ever in my favor. Ta-da! <laughs> so this is like a popcorn-y, caramel popcorn smell. Definitely popcorn. You have to like the way that popcorn smells and then it gets just like sweet and gourmandy in the base. And a lot of you, I, I didn't care for it myself, but a lot of you really like ruby red. So that's sitting out there as well. And I haven't tried others from the house to talk about. I think I tried one more, but I can't comment on this house too much because I haven't explored them. I will say So Avant-Garde has the full lineup of Tiziano Terenzi fragrances. I absolutely adore, like adore the house, have very, very many fragrances from Tiziano Terenzi. And it would be ridiculous for me to try to suggest just one or two or three because I love them all. Even the ones that have not worked out for me have been really great fragrances that I would highly recommend. They have everything from the more basic line of Tiziano Terenzi that has the black caps or the ones that are in the all black bottles all the way up through the almost thousand dollar bottles of Atar fragrances, which are so luxe, so divine. I'm looking at them online here. I'll try to pop a picture up for you so you can see what... If you have the coin like that to spend, the 30% off will get you a substantial discount on that. And what a beautiful gift that would make for someone that is very deserving. Gorgeous, gorgeous bottles. I haven't tried any of these, so I can't speak to them, but I have tried very many from, from the line that has the black caps and the gold bottles, the line that is all gold, which I think is like, that's all the Luna series. Some of the white bottles, I've tried the Sea Stars. I've tried many from the Comet line. And I just, I love so many. I will link my Tiziano Terenzi video down below and just know that there are many more since <laughs> that video was filmed that I adore and cannot speak highly enough about. Definitely check this house out. The website also carries Quinto Canto. The perfumer is Paolo Terenzi, same perfumer as the Tiziano Terenzi line. 
you know, I have some opinions about the shapes of these bottles and all of that, but I want to talk about a few fragrances that I've had the opportunity to try. I have two in hand and maybe one or two others that I want to talk about briefly. I received and, you know, help me out with the name here, Kashimire, Kashimire, Kashimir. This fragrance is for me. So I don't know that this is my type of fragrance, but I think it is a beautiful fragrance. If you are craving Habanita from Molinard, this is that amped up times 10. It has a beautiful powdery aspect to it, like a very smooth, almost like a creamy powder. I know I talk about creamy powders and it sounds like an oxymoron, but it works for this fragrance, like a creamy deep powderiness that I think is just really, really, that part of the fragrance is divine. There's patchouli, which for me is the other star player in this fragrance. So the powderiness with patchouli I mean, maybe it's not as much for me, but some people might really love that. There's a nice sweetness in the fragrance from vanilla and perhaps some other notes, a lang a lang, maybe a creaminess from the sandalwood. Perhaps that's what's lending some of the creaminess too. It says that musk is a ba base note. I can't say that this is very musky. And so my gripe is that the velvetiness of this sometimes attracts lint. And these look like little vampire bottles, which I think is both kind of cute and kind of weird. <laughs> But the fragrance is super strong. It's strong. It's projecting. It's last all day. It's a very powerful fragrance. So if the idea of a sweet powdery patchouli is your jam, this is the fragrance to try out. I'm just not sure that that is for me right now. I did not enjoy wearing it. I thought it was great. I thought it was great while I was wearing it, but it's one of those that I felt like maybe wasn't me. So I just wanted to share that about this. A lot of folks really like Magnificat. So that is available on the website as of today. It's rose, it's got cotton candy, ooh, sandalwood, <laughs> vanilla, little incense-y. A lot of people have compared it to baby cat and consider it a nice alternative to baby cat if you can't get your hands on that. Lucrethia has been compared to black opium, like a longer lasting, stronger black opium. So you may want to check that out. I really wanted to talk about one that I fell in love with and that my husband absolutely adores on me. It drove him completely crazy the day that I wore it and when I sampled it when it first arrived. And it is Temptatio. I've been told that it is pronounced Temptatio, but I'm just gonna say Temptatio for now. I love the gold leafing on this bottle. Really, really neat. Sometimes the little plaques on these can come loose. So just be aware of that for the price point. I'm not, I'm not happy about that, but wow, this fragrance is like a deep, dark, woody, fruity, salty combination that is really intriguing. This is going to feel for a lot of people that aren't used to this kind of fragrance, you might hate it and it might seem kind of stinky to you. I think this is just divine. One of the most beautiful fragrances. I, I want to read you the notes, but it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> kind of doesn't matter. If you have smelled the passion fruit the way it is done in Tiziano Terenzi fragrances, it is that same kind of passion fruit here. It also has that deep muskiness that the Tiziano Terenzi fragrances are known for. So if you have tried Herba Pura, Pura and you understand what the musk in there feels like, imagine that except with a very dark fruitiness. Like that one has bright, almost melony fruits in it. This one has overripened dark fruits with some saltiness to it almost like a salty sea air type of thing happening here. There's no sea notes listed or anything like that. This is divinely sexy if you can stand it, if you can stand it. This is for the bold among you, the very bold among you. And the last house that I have to recommend is Veronique Goodbye. So this is a set of fragrances that comes in and out of stock a lot. These are really sort of specialized ingredients in these fragrances. Uh, and so they're hard to come by. And if you see them on the website, snatch them up. If you like fragrances that are well made in terms of the ingredient deck for the perfume and that you understand that they are not the longest lasting because they have more natural ingredients in them. These bottles are absolutely spectacular. This is not in stock as of the day of this video, but I did want to mention Sexy Garig, which is a beautiful sticky amber with patchouli and with a little bit of greenness to it. So good, really unique fragrance and love these bottles. I have one more from the house, but the one that I have that is in stock that I wanna talk about is Noir de Mai. This, my friends, is for those of you that miss those powerhouse old school florals, particularly the really deep ambery rose fragrances. This is really, really good. It has several types of roses, a little bit of pink pepper, and it has a little patchouli and a little bit of amber. So this immediately took me back to my mother who used to wear fragrances like this. It's a very comforting, grown up, sexy smell. This is so good. This is like one of the most ladylike 
but mature fragrances that's out there. So nothing juvenile here at all, nothing fresh and bright and fun and flirty. This is grown sexy, <laughs> late evening time uh, type of fragrance for when you're having a night out on the town and you want the natural musky scent of your skin to mesh really well with your fragrance. The best way that I could describe this, if you've ever tried Reveal from Calvin Klein, and you know it has that like saltiness to it. There's a little bit of that vibe in this fragrance with a deep, almost like exotic smelling rose with that beautiful soft patchouli amber combo. And they all play so nicely together in here. Really, really divine fragrance. Now for what's on the website, I really want to try Vert Desir, and that is lemon and mint and absinthe and cedarwood. So that may be coming home to me soon, but I really, really enjoy the aesthetic of this brand. I appreciate the quality of materials that are used in the fragrances and I've enjoyed everything I've tried so far. I also want to mention a few other brands that I didn't necessarily highlight in this video, but that you may be interested in checking out. Florist, Histoire de Parfums, Goldfield and Banks, Corner Barcelona, Creed, Electimus, Atat Lieb d'Orange, Imaginary Authors, Obvious Parfums, there's a bunch, a bunch out there to try out. So remember, use Veronica 30 for 30% 30 off all the way through Monday at midnight. But there, if there are certain fragrances that you want, like the Veronique Bai or the Ambra Magique or some of these other fragrances that you know are popular and are going to be sold out, some of the BDKs, go grab those now if you know for a fact that those are on your wish list, you know what they smell like, and you want them. Go get your discount and get your fragrances. Thank you so much as always for your support of this channel and for your interest in these sales. As I mentioned, I am a proud partner with So Avant Garde and highly recommend them. Let us know in the comments what you're thinking of getting and I hope you have a happy shopping experience. Take care friends.